Hi, uh, welcome to this uh, lecture as part of the course on basic construction materials. Uh, in this lecture, we will look at uncoated steel reinforcement. This is the outline of this module on metals. Uh, in the previous lecture, we looked at iron and iron products and how they are manufactured, cast iron, etc. And uh, today we are going to look at steel reinforcing bars. In particular, uh, uncoated steels we will cover today and then coated steel, pre-stressing steel and some test methods and specifications we will cover in the uh, following lecture. And followed by there will be one lecture on structural steel uh, by Professor Arul Jayachandran. And these are the uh, some of the textbooks I use for this course and uh, as you know very well lot of information from the internet uh, has been used uh, by photographs etc to make the course more uh, interesting for you and easy to convey the messages okay now uh, how is steel manufactured we already looked at it and why it corrodes uh, we looked at it in the previous lecture just wanted to uh, emphasize on one aspect here that steel is manufactured from iron ore so essentially uh, sorry because of the uh, heat treatment and the mechanical treatment uh, given during the manufacturing of the steel uh, the energy level of steel is higher than that of the iron ore so when we use this steel in concrete structures uh, the structures gets exposed to moisture oxygen carbon dioxide chloride etc and in that ex the exposure conditions the steel will get corroded and this corrosion is nothing but the extractive metallurgy in the reverse direction and the corrosion product is having similar uh, you know structure chemical structure as that of iron ore okay also one more thing i would like to mention is that uh, it's the iron ore is heavily used for manufacturing of steel uh, in India even today. Uh, majority of the steel manufacturers use iron ore as the raw material. But if you go to uh, you know uh, most of the developed world, they have started heavily uh, heavy use of uh, scrap metal for the, as raw material for manufacturing uh, steel. So the use of iron ore is less. Uh, but more of uh, scrap metal is used and in India we are still uh, using a lot of iron ore as raw material. So this is just a quick look at the manufacturing process. Uh, essentially the rebars are made uh, you know from either billets, billets are uh, you know prism like shape uh, you know prism shape uh, elements which are produced first and then they are put into some uh, kind of roll uh, to make different uh, steel sections including the rebars okay the different type of dies are used for that now let's look at the uh, how the steel industry kind of evolved okay this slide shows the steel industry started with mild steel in 1950s if you look at i'm not covering the uh, things before but just last few decades we are looking at First, we had mild steel uh, in 1950, then galvanized rebars were introduced, but later on people stopped using galvanized rebar, uh, then HYSD or high yield strength rebars, high yield strength deformed bars, okay. They were used high yield strength deformed HYSD. Then epoxy coated rebars were introduced in 1970s and in 80s we started seeing cold twisted deformed rebars then stainless steel then uh, again galvanized or zinc coated steel came into the market and then in 1990s not much change but in after 2000 we started seeing tmt mainly for ductility and corrosion resistance uh, higher strength also without really may modifying much of the uh, uh, you know, manufacturing process in the sense not not really uh, too much cost but you know it was a low cost option available to enhance the ductility and at the same time to get better strength also and also low carbon chromium which is corrosion resistant steel and in 2007 zinc polymer membrane steel again coated reinforcement 
now latest version uh, there is one more type of coating which is coming is called plasma coated steel uh, it's essentially uh, again uh, galvanized coating but uh, are done at a, a very different uh, you know plasma level that means very um, fine microstructure level so these are just to show you some a glimpse on how the steel industry kind of evolved uh, you know over the past few decades now 30 percent of all the steel that is manufactured whether it is plates sheets rebars whatever all the steel we put together 30 percent of that will be steel rebars okay in india in india that is the kind of uh, distribution uh, and uh, Tata, JSW, JS, Jindal Steel pa and Power uh, Limited, Steel Authority of India, uh, Rispath, in, uh, you know, uh, Rashtriya Inspath Nigam Limited, RINL, uh, it's also called Vizag Steel. So, these are some of the major steel manufacturers, but there are numerous other uh, companies which make steel. In fact, uh, you know, the major, the total production, if you look, these numerous other companies they contribute about 65 plus uh, you know percentage of the steel uh, rebars which is made okay uh, in fact greater than uh, 65 percentage so uh, you can see uh, you know so many companies are out there uh, which buy the millets uh, you know uh, uh, which buy the billets from the uh, uh, manufacturer like the billet here they buy and then produce the uh, steel rebar okay so um, now all these 30 percent of the steel which we are talking they are all rebars uh, all these rebars are kind of governed by this one standard specification is 1786 published by uh, bureau of indian standards okay so, all the steel rebars have to meet these specifications, the mechanical and chemical properties which are given in this standard so that they can be used, okay. They are bound to meet these specifications and this is for high strength deformed steel rebars for wire and concrete, uh, for bars and wires for concrete reinforcement, okay. Now, what are the different type of grades? available or to be precise the strength grade available okay so here uh, you have studied already stress and strain and all that so there is something called yield strength which we studied so this is one of the grade let's say fe 250 fe stands for iron okay so we have so many of these grades available uh, in the market fe 250 415 415d 415s so i will cover these things in the next lecture a little bit more detail however what is this 250 250 is the yield strength of the steel so there are different uh, the e steel rebars with different strength grades are available or steel rebars with different yield strengths are available and they typically range from 250 to all the way up to 700 but the 600 and 700 are not widely used very very uh, rarely they are also not much available but uh, 415 500 550 etc are available so these are the bars which are in the available in the market today and uh, if you look at the graph on the right side you can see that as the strength increases the 250 here as it increases the ductility is decreasing so the point here the end point of this they are actually moving to the left right that means ductility is decreasing okay so ductility is essentially the width of the stress strain behavior graph if you want to really look at it it is width of the stress strain uh, graph essentially in the uh, plastic zone but uh, what you see is as the strength, in, strength of the reinforcement increases from 250 to let's say 600 as shown on the graph, the width of the graph is decreasing that means ductility is decreasing. This is something important to look at also. Now what are these numbers? All these seven, all these numbers are characteristic yield strength. We looked at this characteristic strength in the uh, early lectures and so these are the characteristic yield strength okay characteristic 
yield strength of the bar yield strength okay so these are i'm talking about these points here characteristic yield strength okay okay now uh, these are type different type of reinforcing bars and strands available in the market you, uh, first one to five we will cover today in this lecture in the next lecture, we will cover 6, 7, 8 and 9 and 10 we will cover in the lecture on composites. I mean, uh, it's, it's not, uh, I just wanted to mention that there are these fiber or plastic rebars are also available, you know, plastic. Plastic rebars are also available, very lightweight, uh, but they are still, uh, you know, uh, yet to capture the market because of uh, you know it, it's relatively new and steel is well time tested and proven we know it is going to work so in this uh, module we will only focus on uh, metals uh, so we will not talk about the fiber reinforced polymer rebars but we will cover the items one to nine in this particular slide now uh, item one is plain and hot rolled or mild steel bars Two is cold twisted rebars. Number three is the one which is widely used today, TMT bars. Then corrosion resistant bars and stainless steel rebars. These are the five bars which we are five type of reinforcement which we are going to look at in the coming slides. Now plain and ribbed or hot rolled mild steel bars. Plain bar means something like this. Okay, it's smooth. There are no ribs on the surface. So, the steel has to get very well bonded with the concrete, right? So, sometimes in some places you do not want that bond also, okay? One example is double bars which we are using on highway construction. If you are interested, you can just search for this word double, D-O-W-E-L, double bars, okay? So, you will know where these plain bars are used. It is used in the highway construction, concrete highways, etc. It is used where you want the bar to slip uh, like, like this uh, in the concrete. Uh, but the most of the other concrete construction, we want the bar to be in contact and the relative movement between the steel and concrete should be zero. Okay. So, that is when we use ribbed bars with very high bond strength. Okay. So, these are the ribbed bars can see the ribs on when you next time when you see the steel rebar on construction sites you can see it there will be these ribs like we have ribs on our body right so like that they have also ribs and they help in preventing the slipping of bar inside the concrete now other type of bar uh, and uh, sorry uh, before we go these are also mild steel typically these bars are of fe uh, 250 grade okay uh, and there was a demand for in uh, this is a, a demand for increasing the strength so people tend to uh, do uh, you know uh, go for strain hardening or this this is the next generation type rebar which came or cold twisted deformed bars or high yield strength rebar it's also sometimes called h y s d high high yield strength high yield strength default okay h y s d rebars okay now uh, you can see there is a difference in the rib pattern on this and the one i saw in the previous slide so you notice this 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 is here you see here this i i kind of call it a seam like in a cricket ball right and then you have ribs here these are the ribs okay in the previous one, these are the ribs here. Now there is a C which seam which goes like this also, and this particular line is twisted now. Twisted in case of C T D. Now let's see how it gets twisted. You see here, this is that I am talking about. You can see here. So, they are twisted just like when you twist a towel, you know, you can see in this picture here, uh, just like that, that is the process which is by which it is made. So, when the we, we do this cold working or work hardening or strain hardening of these rebars, it is done at a temperature which is called cold but not cold for you. That temperature is about between 400 to 
700 degrees Celsius. So, it is essentially the temperature below the recrystallization temperature of the steel, recrystallization temperature. So, when the molten metal gets cooled and after uh, once the temperature reaches this 400 to 700, 400 that range, at that time it is colder than the recrystallization temperature. Okay? So, at that temperature the ta rebar is taken and then twisted and then we get this uh, type of cold twisted deformed bars and problem with this bar is there are some residual stresses. Okay? Now, because of this residual stresses, resistance to corrosion also decreases. Okay? Now, this graph uh, resistance to corrosion decreases. Now, before we go into more into that, let me just tell here when the, we do this uh, deformation or this cold working, this, this graph here indicates that. So, tensile strain as the strain is more, then more and more the strength tensile strength or the amount of cold work. So, the, you can look at this amount of cold work as it is increased, the yield strength is increased. If you take this point as the yield strength, yield strength, you know, they also tend to increase. Okay. So, you can do something like this, yield strength increases. Also, tensile strength, the peak value is also increasing. Okay. Peak value is also increasing. Okay. So, this, this is the tensile strength, sorry, this is the tensile strength curve and this is the yield, yield strength and this is the tensile strength, okay and also ductility decreases, okay. Anyway, point is these bars were heavily used for a couple of decades in 1970s, 80s, etc. But uh, now, not much in uh, use. Now, resistance to corrosion also decreases due to the residual uh, tensile stresses. Now, cold working process, it can lead to anisotropy in polycrystalline metals due to the deformation of the uh, grains. So, what is happening while do you do this cold twisting? The microstructure kind of you can see this grain structure we were very thoroughly we studied all this grain formation etc in polycrystalline uh, metals so you can see these before rolling they have equaxed grains means the, the size of this uh, axis of these grains are more or less similar in all directions however after the rolling they get elongated or an oriented grains they they you know the rolling direction in, in the horizontal direction as you see in the picture. So, the, uh, the, the grains kind of get elongated and anyway the point is the because of all this there are some residual stress on the surface of the steel and when there are a stress at the surface of the steel then CTD bars kind of tend to uh, show very poor corrosion resistance. So, now these bars are not really made in the market. Um, you know, it is now the TMT steel which is uh, being uh, made. But if you go to uh, structures which are like, you know, some 20, 30 years old, you will see all these kind of TMT bars are used. You can look for this, uh, this uh, the shape of these uh, ribs on them or seams on them. Okay. 